What concerns are you hearing from players, coaches, and personnel about what life is like inside the bubble? Well, Ryan, those concerns that I'm hearing fall into two categories. One, like DeMar DeRozan said, quality of life, and two, just health and safety. And on the health and safety front, you're hearing guys like Damian Lillard talk about how he doesn't expect to be leaving his room. That's his plan, save for basketball activities. And that's just because the coronavirus is still a very real thing, even though there is this insulation that is intentionally being built into the bubble, if you will, those things still exist. And then on the quality of life front, you have guys like DeMar DeRozan saying what he did about concerns over what they're going to be able to do. You have someone like Alex Caruso who's saying, you know what, it's going to be okay because we have this player's lounge, we have access to Xbox, we have access to these other things, and so I'm not going to be too concerned about that. But my mom used to tell me people are afraid of what they don't know, and mm. this is certainly the unknown. Yeah, there's so much unknown here, and I have to wonder, Malika, and all of this, I have to wonder if this is going to frustrate some guys so much that they might say, you know what, I'm here, but, but I'm not staying. I might have to go. I mean, it's certainly a possibility. Look, there, there are still some, some things that should be figured out over what exactly happens if a guy, we know that if a guy says they're not going to report, but they are medically cleared and they are not replaced, then they could be subject to uh, some sort of financial penalty. But if they do come down to Orlando, and let's say they get a minor injury, one that typically maybe they would play through, but in these circumstances when they're already feeling uncomfortable, let's say it's a back spasm or something like that, they may say, you know what? I'm out at this point. And that's something we absolutely could see. Now, also, the other possibility is as time goes on, perhaps guys would get more comfortable. There'll be less people in the bubble as teams are, pro are progressively eliminated. And so those are the two possibilities that you're juggling. But it's absolutely something that we could see happen where guys get down, take a look around and say, you know, I just don't feel totally comfortable. But being down here right now, I can tell you that the NBA is taking any feedback that I've given them very seriously, which I'm sure means any feedback Back the players give over how they're feeling will be taken e with even more, uh, you know, seriousness. Yeah, you would have to think they would adjust with some of that feedback. So what is the process like entering the bubble? Well, uh, my producer, Melinda Adams, and I took a bus. Uh, it was probably a four-minute charter bus yesterday from the hotel we had been staying at with NBA staff into the bubble officially. We went in, we picked up hands-free our magic bands and a card with our room number on it so we didn't have to interface with anyone. We got tested and now, Ryan, we are officially in lockdown. So what that means is at 8 a.m., at noon and 6 p.m., there are meals dropped outside our doors. The person who drops them walks away so we don't actually have to spend any face-to-face -face time with them, with them. And that's what it's going to be like for us for the next four days. Now, our our quarantine lasts for a total of a week, whereas the players' quarantine, which is going to look very similar to ours, lasts just a couple of days. And that's because they took a chart, they're going to be taking chartered planes and just are going to be having less contact with the outside world than reporters and NBA staff are. But this green band I'm wearing, Ryan, that doesn't get you into the VIP section to swag surf at the club. That means we're <laughs> officially on lockdown, and I'm going to have to keep this on until I've been cleared. Oh, it's the exact opposite of that. At least you get some sort of room <laughs> service, so I'll give you that. Malika, stay safe. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Now, let's talk about this. On Wednesday, Blazers star Damian Lillard, you heard, you heard Malika just bring him up. He expressed serious doubts about whether players will strictly follow all the rules and all those protocols that go on inside the bubble. Take a listen to this. you telling me you're going to have, you know, 22 teams full of players follow all the rules? Like, when we have 100% freedom, everybody don't follow all the rules. So... I mean, I don't have much confidence, but hopefully, you know, it'll be it'll be handled to a point where like we're not putting everybody at at risk or in a dangerous position. You know what I'm saying? You know, Damian Lillard has been bummed about this, it seems like, from the very beginning, but he's got a valid point right there. It's not just about him following the rules, it's everybody else. So let's welcome an ESPN analyst, Jay William and Kendrick Perkins. Jay, look, Lillard, DeMar DeRozan, they both expressed concerns about the NBA's health and safety protocols and abiding by them. So I just want to ask you this. If you're coming into the bubble, what would be your biggest concern? Well, the, the safety protocol, right, I think it, it is massive here because, you know, you need everybody to bat a, a thousand. And 
you know, will you have people that potentially catch this? Yes. And, you know, ultimately, I, I really want to address this because this is a, a big thing that I'm hearing a lot of people debate all the time. And, you know, this is not a health versus the economy, Ryan. All right. Protecting health does not get in the way of economic recovery. Protecting health is the route to economic recovery. And that's how we should be looking at this. So, you know, and this is something that's challenging for everybody to process. It's subjective based upon, you know, what your risk tolerance is for where you are in your life. And all these guys do have major concerns because, you, you, look, Perk and I both know this. We're around a lot of younger guys all the time. Perk and I both have kids. We live different lives. But I also don't want to talk to my younger guys who live different lives than what we live. And a lot of guys will combat the rules. A lot of guys will challenge the status quo because they want to live their life and have fun. They might, may not be taking this as, as seriously as other people. And if that is the case, knowing that that's the norm for just a microcosm of life, that's going to be a challenge for them to pull this off. Yeah, and you, and you talk about the age difference there. It's different for the younger guys. So, Kendrick, I got to ask, what would you be talking to these younger guys about if you had to go in that bubble with them? Well, I think as a leader and as an older guy, as a veteran on the team, you got to make sure that you harp on this day in and day out, even in film session and practice. Hey, guys, make sure we do what we're supposed to do outside of the uh, court when you're not away, when, we, when you are away from the Looking at it like this, it's not going to be perfect, but we are talking about a billion dollar business, the NBA. I'm pretty sure they did the best job of crossing their T's and dotting their I's. When you look at Adam Silver and, and creating this bubble, you know, you got 24 hour surveillance. You're getting tested every day. Listen, it's nowhere in the world that that's happening with, right? It's probably safer being in a bubble than in your own home. The only concern that I would have is leaving my family to deal with everything that's going in the outside world while I'm going down to a billion dollar bubble and being pampered. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.